How are you doing guys? Malik over at Modern Pond. We did a video flounder fishing with artificial lures and from that video I've had a bunch of requests on how I fly fish for flounder. There's not a lot of information out there for fly, on fly fishing for flounder or fluke. Uh, so I'm just going to give you my, the breakdown on what I do from the reel to the rod, line, leader, flies, the whole nine yards. I'm going to give you the whole breakdown on what I do to fly fish for flounder. Let me start out by saying I don't do it all the time. It's not like I go out every three days and, and bag a bunch of flounder on the fly rod. I am uh, mildly successful at it. I don't always catch flounder on the fly rod every time I go out, but I don't always catch fish every time I go out. So just so that so I'm not setting you up for failure here. It is hard. It is not easy. I'm not sight casting these fish. I'm I'm using the knowledge of the bay system that I fish in to blind cast um, with a more educated guess and put the fly where I think the flounder are. I don't actually see the flounder when I fly fish for them. Let's start out with gear, what I use when I fly fish. First of all, my area, eight weight rods are king. Everybody pretty much fishes eight weights. The eight weight rod in the Gulf Coast will cover uh, sea trout, redfish, skipjack, black drum, flounder. It'll pretty much cover any of the inshore species. Uh, you're not going to have, you're not going to be underpowered with it and it's a big enough rod to throw the size flies that we need to throw down here. Uh, I, I throw an 8 weight 99% of the time. I also have some bigger rods, uh, some 10s and 12s that I use when, if we do any offshore or jetty fishing. I use a 4 piece, 9 foot, 8 weight fly rod. Uh, this particular one is a Sage Z-axis. I don't think they make this rod anymore. I think it was replaced by the Sage 1. Uh, Sage rods are nice. They're kind of high dollar. You don't have to spend this kind of money on a fly rod uh, to, to get what you need. There are plenty of good fly rods out there. I also have an 8 weight TFO, which is about, I don't know, 25% the cost of this thing. It was considerably less expensive. It works just fine. Good quality fly rod makes the day a little bit more enjoyable, but if you're on a budget, there's plenty of fly rods out there for under 200 bucks. I've seen combos for under 300 bucks that, that will work just fine. Uh, I use an eight weight reel. This is a Nautilus Envy uh, G8. Uh, again, high dollar reel. You don't have to have a high dollar reel. Um, I just prefer uh, good gear. Uh, good gear makes life more fun. Uh, so it, if you've got the money to spend on this stuff or if you already have your fly fishing stuff, use what you got. Uh, if, if you don't have anything and you're going out and buying something, go to your tackle shop, ask the guys what they have in stock that's good quality for, for in your budget. I use 20 pound backing on most of my stuff or I will use a 30 pound Spectra Power Pro. As far as buying fly line. If you're new to fly fishing, there's like a hundred thousand different fly lines out there and it can be very confusing. Generally what I use all around in the Gulf Coast for all inshore species is a weight forward WF, eight weight floating or whatever weight matches my rod. So a WF 8F. The eight weight floating line is not ideal for flounder, but they don't make a uh, Rio flounder taper line. So you kind of have to use what's available. If you want to buy a fly line specifically for flounder fishing, I would recommend a weight forward, eight weight intermediate sinking line. Um, what you're doing with flounder fishing is you're fishing the lower bo bottom of the water column, if not all the way on the bottom. So the intermediate sinking line will help get your fly down faster. Uh, if you've already got an inshore setup, you've probably got a weight forward floating line. The cheap, easy solution to make your line an intermediate or sinking line is a sinking leader. These leaders right here, uh, Airflow makes these. These are the Airflow Poly Leaders. This is a five, uh, five foot extra super fast sinking line. This stuff right here advertises that it sinks at six inches a second. What these leaders are is basically like a traditional tapered leader that's got this rear butt section. If you can see it, it, it has like a coating on the line and it's some kind of like tungsten putty coating on the line that, uh, that keeps the, the 
proper taper to the leader so that your fly will turn over, but it'll also, once it lands on the water, it has a, it has like a negative buoyancy. It makes it sink real fast. Um, this stuff right here, you can see it towards the end. That's where the, the welded loop is. You can actually feel it in your hand. It's, it's pretty dense. I think what they use is like a, a tungsten powder polymer mix. So it's still flexible and will turn your fly over. Uh, it's got a welded loop on one side and it gives you a nice uh, five foot, kind of a center section of a leader. So you've got this five foot kind of limp tungsten painted deal. And then what I do is I put about a, uh, I don't know, that was about a four foot piece of, of 15 pound, 20 pound fluorocarbon or monofilament on the end so that I don't have to eat up my actual $8 liter. So this is an $8 solution versus an $80 spool of fly line that'll help you get the job done. This fly right here, I think I've caught most of my flounder on this fly right here. This is a bucktail clouser. I got, these are either small or extra small lead eyes uh, on a number four standard shank hook and with red and black bucktail. This little clouser, if you're not familiar with clouser, this is like the go-to fly for inshore saltwater fly fishing. Uh, that I have it in several different colors. The, the clouser gives you a nice bait fish silhouette in the water. Uh, a lot of guys look at it, they're like, that doesn't look like anything. Well, flies don't look like this when they're wet, you know. You get that fly in the water and all of a sudden you get it wet, it gives a nice bait fish silhouette in the water. This fly will go to the bottom and sit like this, especially with the leader. It'll really help drive it to the bottom, get it down quicker. Uh, it helps get the fly to the fish. Now you gotta remember that a lot of guys say, you gotta get the fly to the fish. You can't get the fish to the fly. The, f the fly is a small um, kind of stealthy bait and you put it in front of the fish and the fish thinks it's sneaky and gonna eat the fly. You're not going to be able to rattle them in uh, with the fly rod. You have to put the fly to the fish. The fish is not going to come to the fly. This is a really good pattern. I've done real well with it. Uh, the other patterns that work well, real well besides your traditional clousers, um, and I got lots of clousers in here. That's, that's kind of the go-to pattern right there. Uh, besides the clousers, any of your shrimp imitations, like these little guys right here, these ultra shrimp, uh, this particular one doesn't sit it doesn't have quite enough weight. Um, normally what I would do if I was to tie this fly, I would use this pattern. I would upturn the hook. So I would, I would run the hook up instead of down. And I would probably put a couple of wraps of lead wire around the hook before I tied the fly on there to give it a little extra weight, have it sit on the bottom this way. If you run it this way, the, the shrimp's gonna wanna do that. It's not gonna do a whole lot. It's not gonna look like how it's supposed to look. Uh, so for the most part, I think flounder eat uh, shrimp and small bait fish like mud minnows. And, and this right here is gonna cover your mud minnow, bait fish, and even kind of a shrimpy, shrimpy look. Uh, if you wanna do something different, there's tons of fly patterns out there. Find something that you like. Uh, the next piece of advice that I'm gonna have for you on fly fishing for flounder, a lot of guys that are traditional fly fisher are not, fly fishermen are not gonna agree with me on this, but it is what it is. Procure. This stuff right here, this is a, a general inshore saltwater pr procure. I also like the mullet flavor and the shrimp flavor. Um, some fly fishermen are gonna call this cheating. It is what it is. Fl flounder are scent-driven creatures. They are scent-based hunters. They are scent-based ambush hunters. A lot of guys are dis gonna disagree with me on scenting a fly. It is what it is. The, the scent is going to highly increase your catch rate. You don't need to go crazy with this stuff. Just a little tiny dab on that bucktail. It'll really adhere to it. It'll hold on there. It'll, it'll last a long time. It's going to improve your catch rate. I guarantee it. Um, it. It's not as traditional, but it works. And what we're out to do is, is catch a, a difficult species, to, first of all, to catch on rod and reel in an even more difficult manner, which is on the fly rod. All right, guys, let me give you a scenario. Not, not only do you need to know the proper gear for f fishing for flounder, but you also got to get set up right. This isn't like you're fishing for bonefish where you're walking a flat or you're, you're pulling around and you see the fish and you're casting in front of the fish and the fish takes the fly. 
you're blind casting with flounder. They're, they're, they lay on the bottom, they're camouflaged, they're hard to see if you're standing right over them with a lantern. Uh, they're not a sight casted fish. It's one of the reasons a lot of guys don't fly fish for them because you don't see them. You don't, you're not going to just drop that fly right in front of them. So generally what we do when we flounder, when we flounder fish with the fly rod is we know where they are or we have a good idea of where they are. Uh, for example, we caught them maybe uh, a day or two before on rod and reel or we gigged them in a spot a day or two before. And so we have a general idea of the vicinity that they're in. So it's going to increase the probability of us catching a fish by blind casting. So here's a scenario for you. Here's the water. Uh, this is the land right here. And you maybe have uh, a run out from somewhere and that you've gigged flounder um, say you gigged them or you've caught them in this area, general area. Well, with this scenario right here, let's say the wind's coming over this direction. I'm a right-handed caster. I prefer to have the wind at least somewhat on my left-hand side, if not at my back or at my face. Uh, I don't want it on my right-hand side. I would set up probably starting right here. And what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of guess where the flounder are. And what I would do is I would say here I'd cast, blind cast a couple. If that didn't work, I'd move forward. I'd blind cast a couple. I'd move forward. I'd blind cast a couple. And I'd work this area in that manner. Um, flounder like the drop off. They're going to want like a shallow to deep water drop off. And depending on time of day for the fish they might be in inches of water or they might be in a couple of feet of water or they might be all the way at the bottom of the channel but they work that drop off shallow to deep throughout the day uh, and it's if you don't know exactly where they are you kind of have to work the from the deep to the shallow when I cast the fly I let it hit I get let it get all the way down to the bottom I let it sit for if I think it's five feet of water I'm gonna let it sit for at least five seconds let it get all the way down to the bottom I'm going to use short, relatively slow strips. I don't want my fly to be jerked up to the surface where I have to wait another 10 seconds for it to come back down again. Slow, deliberate strips, run it across the bottom. That's where you're going to catch the fish, is on the bottom. And again, guys, remember with flounder fishing, you have to bring the fly to the flounder. The flounder is not going to chase your fly down from way across on the other side of the flat just because you threw it out there doesn't mean he's going to come around. Guys, fly fishing for flounder, it's not easy. You're going to have to swallow a little bit of that fly fishing pride. You're going to have to blind cast some. You may have to scent your bait. Uh, you may have to scent that fly a little bit. Uh, don't, don't fret. It, it's not easy, but it's very gratifying when you do catch a hard to catch species that's not commonly caught on the fly rod. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they're great fighters for their size. Uh, they really fight hard. Uh, this is Malik Afram over at Modern Pond. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for videos, put something down in the comment. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay safe.